Hey guys, what's up? My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. And a lot of people have been asking me if I'm gonna upgrade from my Phantom 3 drone to the new DJI Phantom 4 drone. And the answer is no, because I don't think I have to. Okay, so there's a couple of things on the Phantom 3 drone that I actually like over the new Phantom 4. Uh, one of those is that the gimbal assembly is now integrated in the body of the Phantom 4 drone, which in one sense does make it more protected, but in another sense it makes it a real pain in the butt to get to the gimbal, to replace it if you need to, to repair it, to maintain it, whatever. Whereas this gimbal right here is completely exposed, which does leave it uh, vulnerable to la harsh landings or crashes, but it's very, very easy to maintain and to look at these little dampeners and make sure that they're functioning correctly and replace them if needs be. Additionally, the new Phantom 4 has a totally different battery, which means if I was to upgrade to the Phantom 4, I'm going to have to essentially throw away all of these batteries that I paid about $120 to $150 a pop for, and I'm going to have to buy brand new batteries. So that's a big deal breaker to me. If they would have gone maybe with the old battery, I might consider it, but I don't want to have to get rid of all of my investment in these, these old batteries. So, um, you know, that's another thing. I want to be able to keep these batteries in use. And so I'm not going to upgrade uh, in part for that reason as well. So I definitely want to highlight some of the differences between the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4 and talk about why I think that the Phantom 4 isn't enough of an upgrade to warrant you ditching your Phantom 3 in order to purchase the Phantom 4. But the main thing that I want to talk about is how you're able to use software to upgrade the features of the Phantom 3 to be able to do some of the cool things that the Phantom 4 can do. And all you need is a simple app. So the app that I use is called Litchi or Leechy. I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. Uh, I don't know anybody at the company who makes the app. I haven't talked with anybody. They haven't endorsed this at all. This is just me using their product and finding out that it really adds a ton of features and functionality to the Phantom 3 that makes it so I don't really need the Phantom 4. Now in particular, there's two features that I want to highlight. The first one is the auto follow feature. Now on the new Phantom 4, it is able to detect an object, even a moving object, and track it and follow it in real time using the camera. This is a feature that the Phantom 3 does not have using the stock DJI Go app. However, with the Litchi app, they've incorporated this technology into the new app and you are able to track and follow someone or an object, a car, whatever it is you're trying to track uh, in real time and the drone will automatically track them and follow them. You can even have the drone rotate around them and follow them in real time and track them. So this is a feature that works absolutely flawlessly with the uh, Litchi app and uh, I'm showing you screenshots actually right now of me using this feature and it looks pretty much identical to the uh, Phantom 4 version of this feature, uh, which is obviously is not available on the Phantom 3 stock. But with this app, you are able to uh, use this track and follow feature, and it works very, very well. The second feature that is huge with the new Phantom 4 is just the range. It has range that just absolutely blows away the Phantom 3, especially the Phantom 3 Standard, which is the version that I have. I've noticed that the Phantom 3 uh, Standard can't even get out much more than about half a mile before it initiates the auto return home because I lose signal between my controller and the drone. And so I don't have the range that I uh, wish that I could have um, with the Phantom 3 Standard. Standard, and the Phantom 4 just absolutely uh, beats all of the other Phantom uh, 3 quadcopters in terms of range. Now the only way that you can kind of offset this is if you kind of upgrade your controller on a Phantom 3 to get a range extender, but that's going to cost money. You're going to have to either do it yourself if you are kind of a tech savvy person, or you're going to have to send your controller in and have somebody do it for you, and that's going to cost a lot of money. Or you can use the Leechy app, which does something that arguably is a little bit dangerous or reckless, 
But what it does is it allows you to send your drone out on an automated mission where it completely uh, disregards the fact that it has detached from your controller, that it's lost signal from your controller, and it just continues on a mission using waypoints and focus points that you set for it. Now I've done this, I've flown the quadcopter miles, my DJI Phantom 3 standard, I've flown it, flown it miles uh, all the way from where um, my home is all the way to where I work, uh, and it took about 15 minutes. It was a one-way flight, and uh, when I got to work, my quadcopter showed up, and I was able to manually then land it, and uh, everything worked great. And so with these missions, you're able to send your quadcopter out on a one-way mission where you meet it, or you can even send it on a round-trip mission where it flies out uh, a couple of miles and then returns a couple of miles. And this is something that the Phantom 3 um, could not do without this app. This is something that the Phantom 4 can't do. So actually, this allows the Phantom 3 to have range that goes beyond even what the Phantom 4 is currently capable of doing. Now with that being said, you're not in control. You have to basically program uh, the, the path and all these different waypoints and focus points and kind of cross your fingers and hope that nothing goes wrong on the drone and that it returns. Um, and it does obviously have a return to home feature so if for any reason at all um, it messes up in the middle of this mission it will just return to home to whatever home point you've set and programmed it for as a safety feature. Um, so, in any case, this allows you to have range now on the Phantom 3 that you could not have before. It allows you to have range that you don't have on the Phantom uh, 4. So, um, so, in my opinion, with those two features, with the ability to send this out on a mission that extends the range and the ability to have this follow focus feature, um, it really brings additional functionality and features to the Phantom 3 that, in my opinion, don't warrant the purchase of the Phantom 4. Now, there are a couple of things about the Phantom Phantom 4 that are really cool. It has the, the sensors on the front of the quadcopter that allow it to not run into things and avoid things, but those are uh, only on the front of the quadcopter. They're not on the sides and the back. Most uh, accidents and crashes tend to happen uh, when a quadcopter copter backs into or uh, side swipes uh, an object. And so, um, so those sensors are very limited at this point, and they, in my opinion, don't, again, warrant the purchase of the Phantom 4 over the Phantom 3. Uh, there's a couple of other features I kind of want to talk about as well, so um, and kind of downplay on the Phantom 4 and why I don't think um, it warrants the, the, the purchase of the Phantom 4, so those are coming up right now. Now, the new quadcopter is faster. Uh, it does fly, some are saying, 45 to 50 miles per hour. And uh, this one here, I've only seen speeds of about 35. If you get a wind behind it, maybe 40. But here's the thing, for the videography that I'm taking with this thing here, 35 to 40 miles an hour is plenty fast for what I need it to do. So for me, the issue of adding five to 10 miles an hour more on speed, um, that's not really a feature that I'm, I'm personally concerned about. If I needed to keep up at speeds of 50, 60 miles per hour, I'd probably not be purchasing the Phantom to begin with. I'd probably be focusing more on the professional level quadcopters that can fly uh, 50, 60, 70 miles per hour. One of the other really nice features of the new DJI Phantom 4 is that it has removable props that just basically unclip. Whereas these right here require you to use a tool to kind of unscrew them. Now the thing is, I don't ever take my props off. I have a case that, where it just sets right down inside of the case, and I never have to take these off. I just have to make sure they're tight before I uh, lift off and fly away. So um, unless these are broken, I never remove them. I just leave them as be. And so I don't need to worry about the new feature where they have the clips where they remove, go on and off. That's not a feature that I would even use because the case that I have, I can just leave these props on all the time. Let's just talk about cost too, okay? This drone right here is the DJI Phantom 3 standard. Um, and with the app that I just showed you guys, it's able to do some amazing things, right? I mean, it's able to do a lot of the things that the Phantom 4 is able to do. With the app, it's actually able to go farther than the Phantom 4 is able to go, um, than the, just the standard DJI app. So this quadcopter has uh, basically all of the functionality that the Phantom 4 has, minus the speed, minus a couple of sensors, but in my book, not really things that I'm going to care about a whole lot. And this drone here currently retails for $500, okay, $499, versus the DJI Phantom 4, which I think is retailing, I think right now, around $1,400. 
That's almost three times as much as this drone here. I could buy three of these drones and crash two of them before I was worried about not having a drone versus the DJI Phantom 4. I'm flying a very expensive piece of equipment through the air and I'm gonna be stressed out. I'm gonna be worried if that thing goes down if I crash it versus with this, I can choose to be if I want a little bit more reckless because it's only a $500 drone. And so um, to me as a videographer, I would rather take the chances to get the good shots. I'd rather be a little bit more reckless with my equipment to get some amazing uh, shots and some amazing video versus being stressed out while I'm flying something through the air. And so for me, it just makes more sense to have a drone that's $500 versus a drone that's almost $1,500. Uh, and to me, it makes more sense to just upgrade the app and the software that I'm using on this drone versus trying to go with stock software on the other drone and pay a premium for those features. So in my opinion, you can get most of the features of the Phantom 4 on a cheap $500 DJI Phantom 3 drone, and all you have to do is buy the app instead of buying a $1,500 drone.